What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. Let's start today's videos off with the drawing for this U-Sweep visor. Now, last week I did ask you a question because it was the Western States 100, and the question was, who has won the Western States Endurance Run the most number of times? Now, we had, we had a lot of answers. We had a lot of wrong answers. We had a lot more wrong answers than we did right answers. But the correct answer was Anne Trayson. She won the Western States 100 14 times. 10 of those times were in a row. Then she missed a year, and then she knocked out another four. Anne Trayson, at least in my my opinion is the most successful female ultra runner of all time. So we did have two people that gave me the right answer. David Hall and Susie. You all know Susie from her running YouTube channel. I run things. So this week is going to be pretty easy because there's only two people. So David and Susie, you each have a 50% chance of winning. This is how we're going to do it. I have written both your names on these post-it notes. And what I'm going to do is fold them into a quarter. I'm going to fold them into a quarter size like that. Picking names out of a hat doesn't doesn't get much more simple than that. Both names going into the hat. And I'm gonna shake it around. I'm gonna try and get everything on camera. Shaky, shaky, shaky. Oh, I'm not even, not even looking. I'm gonna put it behind my head. This is, we are, if we are nothing if not fair here on Matt B Running. And here we go, I'm reaching in. I have one. I'm not even gonna look at it until I open it up. I can't get it because I chose a post-it note and the sticky is kind of sticking the paper together. Okay, almost got it, almost got it. And the winner, and the winner is, and the winner is, David, David Hall. David Hall, you win this useful advisor. Go ahead and hit me up on Instagram with your address and I'll get this out to you as soon as possible. Sorry, Susie. Okay, now that that's out of the way, this is my running and training vlog. And first of all, the reason I do this is to hear about your running, to hear about your week's running. So I wanna know in the comments, how did your week go? What were your successes? What were your setbacks? I just wanna hear about it. And in the second half of the video, I'm gonna be telling you about my week. I'm gonna run through my days, what I ran on each day and kinda how I felt. I had a lot of ups and downs this week. But first, running is nothing if not a mental game. And I've actually got a pretty good science-backed tip to help you with your mental game. I think this is a good one because it's gonna benefit so many of us out there. So we all know about positive self-talk. Positive self-talk can just help us through the difficult times. It can help us push further, but we're gonna take that to the next level. Now, I do say positive self-talk. Of course, there is negative self-talk. Doesn't take a rocket scientist to kind of figure out that if you talk bad about yourself, you're not gonna perform as well as if you are encouraging and talk good to yourself. And I told you in the beginning that this is backed by science. So let me just tell you a little about this study. This study is out of Bangor University in Wales and they took 24 cyclists who each rode at 80% of their maximum power for as long as they could. Once the cyclists had done this kind of baseline test, they then received training for the next two weeks in self-talk. When they came back and did the same test, the 80% effort all the way to exhaustion, the group that had the training in self-talk lasted 18% or almost two minutes longer than those that didn't receive the same training in self-talk. 18% is pretty huge, but get this, the group that did not receive any training in self-talk, they actually performed worse than their original test. Tell you what, if we could all be guaranteed those results, an 18% improvement just from talking to ourselves, I think we'd all be on board for that one. Generally speaking, we athletes, you and I, we use two kinds of self-talk. The first one is motivational self-talk. So it's like, yes, I'm gonna crush this. You know, when you're at the starting line, you're focused like a laser beam, I'm gonna give this race everything I have. We can also use simple mantras to build our own self-confidence, like I can do this. The other kind of self-talk is instructional self-talk. And that's the type of self-talk that at least I do. Let's say I'm late in a half marathon, late in a marathon, and I'm getting tired. I'll give myself instructional cues, like turn your feet over, drop your shoulders, relax your upper body. That is instructional. And that's generally what us athletes do. We're either trying to motivate ourselves or we're giving ourselves instruction. Both those kinds of self-talk are absolutely fine. I'm not gonna tell you which is better. They're both fantastic. Keep doing it. If you're doing it, keep doing it. What I'm gonna tell you about now is how you address yourself when you are performing self-talk, doing self-talk, self-talking. It turns out that it is much more effective if you address yourself as you rather than I. Can you believe it? Can you believe that little change actually makes a difference? So if you are talking to yourself like you are another entity, you will actually perform better than if you talk to yourself like you're actually talking to yourself. So imagine this is going on in my head. You've got this, Matt. You can do this, Matt. Matt, pick up the pace. Matt, drop your shoulders. Tell myself, you've got this, rather than I've got this, is actually gonna make me faster. Can you believe it? So the same study that we referred to earlier with the cyclists and the 80% all the way to exhaustion, they actually took this. And we're gonna get the results 
right now. So immediately after they did the first time trial, the actual baseline time trial, the participants that were involved in the self-talk group, they recorded two versions of motivational statements. The first version started with I, the second version started with you. For example, I can tolerate this. You can tolerate this. Okay, you get where I'm going, right? So in the corresponding time trials, and this was completely randomized, they didn't just have all the participants use the I statements first and the you statements second. They mixed it up. That's how science works. So here we go, the results. This is what you've been waiting for. Apparently, all the participants found the I statements and the you statements equally motivating. I'm sure if somebody asked me, what motivates you more, Matt? Saying you've got this or saying I've got this. I don't know, they're both pretty motivating. But the results painted a different picture. The results showed that the athletes listening to the you statements performed 2.2% better or 23 seconds better in their time trial. Some of you might be thinking, Matt, 2.2%, that's not much. You're right, it's not much until you're in a race, until you're in competition with someone. And that is the difference between winning or losing. We go out there and we race in order to do the best that we can. By using positive self-talk with a you statement, you are going to run faster. It is scientifically supported. So it turns out that both what we say to ourselves and how we say it actually matters. I want to know a time that you have used positive self-talk. Do you actually remember a race or a run where you used positive self-talk and it made things better? You were able to, to push forward to either finish the race, to finish the workout. Let me know in the comments below. Okay, let's talk about me for a second. I had a pretty, pretty good week workout. Well, every day wasn't good, but overall it was a pretty good week workout. It started off on Monday, as my weeks usually do, with 7.6 miles. I did head over to the mall and I ran up and down those hills in the mall parking lot. Tuesday was another fantastic workout. I did eight miles, but I also did that workout that we talked about last week, the most efficient hit workout. And that was five times five minutes with two and a half minutes rest. And I was actually pretty pleased with myself at the end of that workout. I remember thinking on the second interval that, oh, I might have to bag this one, but I didn't. Actually, I don't remember if I used positive self-talk that day or I just sucked it up and did it. Wednesday, Wednesday was not a good run. I'll be the first to admit it. And I did put a photo on Instagram. You may have seen it, you may not have, but I was exhausted after Wednesday's run. 11 miles, things just weren't clicking. It was an easy run, at least an easy pace. But I was just wrecked, just wrecked from it. And okay, so I didn't bring a hydration pack, so I wasn't drinking the whole time. That could have had something to do with it, or it could have just been cumulative fatigue from the last couple of weeks. The weather doesn't really change here. It's just always hot all the time. That, Run just totally kicked my butt and took me the rest of the day to kind of recover while I had to go to work. But I was kind of blur at work, you know? The next day, Thursday, Thursday, I also ran 11 miles. Well, 11.1 miles. The difference was quite amazing because I ran about the same distance. I ran a 10th of a mile longer on Thursday than on Wednesday. My pace was the same. So by that, it was an easy effort, an easy effort pace. But when I compare the two runs, when I compare Wednesday with Thursday, you can see on Wednesday, although the runs were very similar, Wednesday, I had a relative effort of 80 on Strava. Thursday, the relative effort was down to 33. On Wednesday, my average heart rate was 138. On Thursday, it was 128. So obviously something happened. I was going through something, but who knows? Maybe we just have days like this where we feel better. Some days we feel worse. Wednesday was definitely a worse day. When Friday rolls around, I was happy to only run 7.5 miles and I ran it very easy. By the time Saturday came, I was ready to pick up the pace just a little bit. So I knocked out one of those workouts that I did a few days before, the five times five minutes with two and a half minutes recovery in between. And I had a little extra energy that morning because I actually slept through my alarm, so I didn't get on the peloton before my run. So I woke up, had a cup of coffee, and was able to get out and crush that run without being, you know, a little tired from riding the bike beforehand. And then finally on Sunday, wrapping up the week with a very easy 7.6 miles. Oh, it was toasty out Sunday morning. Bringing my week of running to a shade under 61 miles, just around 98 kilometers. And then of course, on the peloton, I rode 112 miles last week, which is about 181 kilometers. Thanks for staying all the way to the end of the video. I post new running videos at least twice a week. Be kind, be happy, run well. See you in a couple of days.